I want to show you a game of Kotogo vs Kotogo today, but before I show it, I need to give a little bit of background where it came from. So, I really like the idea of playing Go without any Komi. And, um, you know, it seems more elegant to not have the sort of arbitrary points outside the board, just the game is all about uh, dividing the territory on the board and who gets the larger portion of the board wins the game. And with zero Komi and area scoring rules, it also turns out that it's really unusual that you're going to get a draw because the point will the points will usually be of you know uh, plus one point plus three points they increment in in two points at a time, uh, except for the case where you have some uh, seki with an odd number of uh, for instance. So there are, there are some cases where you can get a draw, but it turns out that it's really, really rare. So I think, you know, playing with Zero Komi, it, you know, keeps away that inelegant 0.5 Komi that we always use, while still keeping draws um, rare enough that it's not really an issue in normal games. Still, of course, in tournaments, it, it's nice to be able to guarantee a result. So I'm not saying we should all switch to playing this way, but I think it's quite a nice way to play in a in a casual game. I always like in, in handicap games, for instance, I prefer playing with 0 Komi instead of um, 0 0.5 Komi, because I think if it's a draw, that's just, um, you know, we, we don't mind, that's fine. Um, but so, of course, when you're not playing handicap, when you're playing an, an even game, this brings up the problem that black has a better, better game. If black gets to go first, black has the, you know, initiative throughout the game, and Black will have a much better winning percentage uh, from any strong uh, AI. We'll say that, okay, Black has a big advantage if we don't have any Komi. And um, for a long time, historically, of course, Go was played this way, but, and, you know, we, we managed, but as players, um, it got more and more, as players got stronger, I think it becomes more and more unreasonable to, to give such a big advantage to one of the players. So, um, one common way you could deal with this is by letting, and which is used in, in many different games, is the so-called pie rule, which is just that black makes the first move, but then black is not allowed to make a good move, as good move as possible, but black has to find a sort of just right move, so black can maybe play like here, and the idea is that, okay, if this is creates an even game, that's a good move for black, because next up, white is allowed to choose whether to play black or white, so if black choose a, chooses a too good move, then white will just choose to switch to black, and if black chooses a really bad move, then black will continue playing white. So black has to find some sort of average-looking move. But um, the winning percentage here is not probably not representative of... I don't think it's... Yeah, this is just some stupid... I don't know how it works when it's not live. Um, the category is not actively pondering right now. This is just something left from earlier. Uh, but so, from my earlier experiments with Kotogo, it turns out that, um, you know, any move on the second line is too good for black. 2-2 uh, two, two still gives uh, an advantage to black. So, uh, white should still switch if black plays here, but any move on the first line is too bad for black. So it turns out that for, you know, it's it's close enough for human players, probably. I, I would be quite happy to take zero come in, in a game with... Um, Either black or white, where black opens with 2-2, two, two, but it turns out that it's slightly better for black. Uh, so between really strong players, you would want some more moves in the opening to make it more, uh, you know, because that's, you know, we have run out of possibilities. Black, two, second line is too good, first line is too bad, and, you know, everything else is too good. <coughs> so uh, we would want to add a few more moves, and after just some playing around, there are of course many possibilities, but I, I had this one opening. This one, where black takes not only takes a 2-2, two, two, but also takes a 3-3 three, three, um, in the same corner, creating this really stupid looking shape, which is, which is uh, you know, this 2-2 two, two now looks really inefficient. This turns out to be enough to make the game even. Uh, so at this point, Kotego gives, um, you know, as close to 50-50 as you get at the beginning of a normal game. So I think it's fair enough to call it, call it even. And uh, so I was just, you know, when I found this, I was just interested to see, okay, I, I wanted to play out a few more moves, see how it turned out. 
And uh, and then I, I ended up just, you know, playing out the whole game. I, I didn't manually play out all the games, I just set it up to play automatically after like um some time interval. So this is not really like a normal self play game with a specific set of playouts. I think it were around, you know, a few thousand playouts per, per move at least. So you, it's um Probably a fairly high quality game by Katago, but I'm I'm not uh, suggesting that it's like Katago at its strongest. This is my, my my slow computer and only giving it you know some medium time to think for each move. <clears throat> but still, I I really like this game actually that came from this. Um, it was a really close game throughout, and it was uh, really exciting to watch. So. Uh, yeah, I want to show it to you, and it's not going to be a like in-depth review. I'm just going to sort of go through it quite quite quickly, I think, you know, by my standards. And, um, and we will look at some variations throughout, but of course, it's, I'm I, I'm not going to pretend to be able to understand everything that Katago does. So, one interesting part of having like this some weird fe feature like this in an opening position is that we're not going to have any normal opening. We, we can have like a normal 3-3 to second up left like this, but in this corner we're gonna see something completely new, and that's what I find so exciting about making Katago play, play weird stuff like this. I want to see how it handles something that, you know, I never get to see pro, pro, pro players handle. <laughs> um, so, so far, like, everything that's happening in the other corners is very, very, very normal. Um, this is a Joseki, but I I haven't at least me personally haven't seen this as much as like you know the more common choices here is like this Atari and then either go down or connect here. I think is seen much more more commonly. This case black backs off, and I think when I um, when I had a move you know either like this one or like this one or like this one played against me in my games when I play white, I usually just um, take this vital point, which makes, you know, a really strong shape with this one. And, you know, you have a good follow-up here, and, you know, shape follow-up here if you want to make eyes with this group next. So it basically just makes a very strong group, but it's quite slow. So uh, what Katago does instead is to play this bulge, make a quite ugly shape, but then when black captures one stone in the corner, white can now take Santa, apparently. I would be uncomfortable leaving this group, but Katago decides that, you know, it's not necessary to play another move here right now. Black can't get a severe attack on, on this stones. Um, so white switches to the upper left. And once again, there are so many variations on this 3-3 Yoseki, but we are getting some, some sort of fight here where black wants to cut white into two groups. But at this point, for some reason, black decides that, okay, now I'm no longer... I created the cutting stones here, white can't capture them with one move. So now I'm going to turn back to the lower side and sort of try to ask white, okay, what you're going to do about this group that you didn't actually make a base for? You just created this clumpy shape and then you ignored it. So if I were white here, I would probably, you know, either try to move out with this stone somehow, and I'm not sure what shape is good to do that, or I would probably just pincer here. Probably most likely I would start with the pincer like this, and say that, okay, black should like jump out, and then I'll move out, and it's like that. But Katago actually says that, no, you still can't like do anything severe to me, I think it's more important to continue in the upper left. Um, so then, of course, black says that, no, I think this is more important, so I'm, I'm going to make a base down here, and... Um, this maybe doesn't look like it's attacking this group, but I think by making this group stronger, this is indirectly making this group weaker. So now white jumps out. Now maybe a move in this area for black would be a more severe attack towards white, so white jumps out like this. This connection is pretty good for now. There's some possibility that white is going to get cut later, but it's not worthwhile for black to do it right now, so white is safe for now. And now black just takes a big point on the right. Um, black has quite a low position on the right, uh, with both this 3-3 and this stone on the third line. 
But I think the main purpose of this move is not to build like a moyo here, but to first and foremost prevent white from extending, since white has sort of a, a better position to extend from actually. And actually, white still decides that, you know, if even though black has just made this area much smaller, it's still worthwhile for white to make an extension here. This is not making very many points here. But if black gets this extension here next, in the future there's going to be some hajju with the corner. And when white extends here, now there's like more possibility of jumping in here and putting pressure on this stone. So it's not about like what is the points this move makes locally, but rather how it affects you know white's corner and black stone here. Now at this point, black decides to capture here. And I think the reasoning for this is that after white got the next move in this area, um, black decides that coming out with this stone is not very interesting. I think this had a very similar um, win rate actually, something like this variation. Black can move out with these stones. Um, and you know, it's fine, but uh, I think it's I kind of like the idea of just taking territory and white now decides to just capture these stones. After black has captured here, there's a lot of more RG if, if black decides to come out with this stone, since now there's more weaknesses on the left, and also uh, white no longer has this capture on the top in center. Before, um, you know, there was if white captures on the top, black will have to capture on the, on the left. So by capturing here, black makes make both sides potentially weaker. So it's very important for white to take away the cu cutting stones. Then black plays here, sort of reducing the possibility for white to extend from this influence. So this is like black wouldn't want to go too far here. There might be then white black might get attacks. So black makes sort of a corner corner enclosure, but a very weird looking one with this two two move. Uh, and it looks like it's also threatening to you know make a big area here. But since white has the next move, white can immediately just press it down. So this is very painful for black. If black just wants to push on along the third line, then you know this move looks a bit wasted, at least towards this area. So instead, black is going to fight here. And now we have one of those sequences where I, um, perhaps a stronger player could find some meaning in, in this move, but for me, they just look like uh, random tanukis in the fight. <laughs> so black just said, no, I, want, I don't want to respond to your uh, shoulder directly. I'm going to attach here and try to, you know, make something happen. If I get some forcing moves here, maybe I can fight more strongly. And white resists with his hane, and then black comes back and says, okay, now I'm going to push here. I've created a cutting point. So how are you going to handle all your problems? White plays a hane, trying to, like, make all the stones work together, but there are many weaknesses in white shape. So black harness, white extends. And black doesn't want to connect with an ugly shape right here. So instead, black cuts. And now we see that, okay, some, one of these white stones is going to get captured. So locally, black is going to get pretty safe um, life for this group, probably. Make some points along the side is a likely result. So at this point, white needs to think about, okay, what is white's compensation going to be? And white is actually going to make influence on the outside in compensation. So white makes a strong shape like this. If white tried to save this stone, you know, black can just capture and black's a strong shape and is out. So white decides, okay, I would rather that you capture this stone along the side. And black can actually capture these two stones, but white extends the liberties to make sure that white, it wouldn't be good at this point to just let black capture like this, um, because this is a good shape for black. I'm not sure exactly. Maybe this would also be okay. But like the idea with the move in the game is to extend the liberties, and like this, white can cut here. And even though black can end this liberties, black will capture first. There's no way for white to ladder these stones. But white gets to play the squeeze from the outside. So black captures, white squeezes, white squeezes, and now white has a very nice wall on the outside. So the end result of this exchange, where like black played a shoulder hit, white played a shoulder hit to start with, is that um, by playing this um, attachment here, black switched the fight 
to this area and in the end black got some more territory but white got some more influence. Whoops. So next up white tries to attack this group because this now looks quite weak with all this white influence surrounding it. And important for black here is to remember that white also has weaknesses. There are still some problems with this connection so that's why black plays here, tries to aim at cutting here. Uh, white could place a move that you know completely stays connected, but it would be quite, you know, sort of slow-looking move. Uh, it would allow black to continue playing in this area, make probably an easy life here, and probably white doesn't have enough points to live with black still having access to, to the left side like this. So black plays this, which sort of uh, at the same time trying to fix up this connection, but also trying to close up the left. Um, so this connection is mostly okay, but not quite. <laughs> so black plays this moves, and we see there's this, this uh, cutting point here. Um, notice that white can't. If white plays this atari, black is not going to connect here. Black will just let white capture one stone, and it's like completely meaningless. Uh, so this side is actually safe, and this cutting point is a real threat. But if black cuts right away, then black can just uh, white can just drill through like this, and uh, you know cutting off or black decides to do it, cutting off uh, these stones would be um, too good for white. Um, this is not a good trade for black. So before cutting, black tries to kind of prepare uh, by prepare for this cut by strengthening this connection. And at this point, if white still decides to connect here, first of all it's connecting with a very ugly shape. And second of all, when black moves out here, there's still some argy with this cut, but the stones are a bit weak, so black is probably going to be able to handle this group. And then it's sort of unclear what white has got, since black has sort of gotten into the center already. So if black lives, it's uh, once again unclear that, that uh, white has enough points. Uh, we can see that most of white's points are going to be coming from this center area. There's not like black has this corner, this corner, this corner. White has a little bit in this corner, but it's also quite open with black having such a strong group nearby here. There's probably going to be some stuff happening here in the future. Uh, so really, white needs to make up quite a lot of points in the center. So at this point white decides to just solidify the connection in the center and to kind of complete this influence and allow black to capture these stones. So I thought this was really interesting how an attack that started like it looks like okay white is trying to attack this group uh, but actually when black peeps at this, this weakness here white decides that okay I don't think it's worth it to actually save this group uh, and I'm going to give it up and just take like this stone on the outside is enough for me. And right now it maybe doesn't look as much, but we're going to see how white uh, uses the idea of these stones kind of repeatedly to make up for this sacrifice, or to make the sacrifice uh, worthwhile for for white. I should mention that like all throughout the game so far, it's been very even. Uh, it's around 50% win rate, about about around zero expected score. And it remains like that for um, most of the game. It's uh, There are no huge swings in, in points. So at this point, like when white gets this move on third line, uh, white's area does look very intimidating. And white is so strong on, on all sides directly. So white got first this result in the upper left, where white took some extra stones to capture black cutting points and make a very strong shape. Then white made this very strong wall on the right, and now um, white sacrificed stones to create this wall. So in all these cases white has let black take territory in exchange for getting just a wall on the outside and, and now it looks like white is super strong in the center and just jumping in would be pretty much doomed to just die. So black approaches from the only kind of open direction here, the only um, direction from which black can still come in is the upper right. And you know, playing some normal shape would not like get black far enough. So black plays this shape, which looks really strange. It looks like there's lots of weaknesses here. 
Um, so this is not like directly connected to the upper right. It's more like it's threatening to connect. It's it's going to be hard for white to cut it without giving black something um, in return, sort of. And the next few moves here are <laughs> once again really beyond my understanding. Uh, or not not this one. First, white just uh, forces once here to make this connection re really strong. If black continues in the center, white can of course this time white can actually capture the cutting stones. Uh, so that would save this, that's too big, so black protects like this, and white gets another forcing move. Uh, this is a common Tsuji to like where black can't capture because then you know white can attack here. Um, so white forces, and now white returns to threatening this connection. So we start with this attachment. And I'm probably not gonna try, you know, <laughs> try to give reasoning for this move, but it's just sort of vague. Like it's clear that white is at least threatening this this connection, but black plays away and just makes starts making shape in the center. Um, I'm not sure why this move in particular. I'm guessing that it has to do with like in the future black might get some forcing moves against uh, this shape to threaten to save the stones. Um, that's just my my guess. And this is another weird looking move. Once again, I think it's sort of threatening this connection and also this connection. Black just continues to make shape in the center. Now suddenly white plays away. This is just getting some forcing moves on the center before returning to the fight. So white plays a Hane, double Hane. And black decides to protect like this. If black, like, once again, black needs to be careful to keep these stones dead. Uh, but now white has some extra uh, got some extra forcing moves towards uh, saving this stone here, which we're going to see come into play later on. So now white returns, plays this really aggressive Hane. When white is so strong all around, of course white needs to wants to fight really strongly. Normally in this shape, you know, you would maybe expect white to play a Hane like this, but this is sort of not using the fact that white is strong all around. So white plays really strongly, it just cuts black off. Black plays an Atari. White peeps, once again trying to really not allow black to make shape. Then connect solidly here. So this makes a really good shape with these stones. And this stone is looking quite weak. And although these stones are quite short on liberties, once again since white is so strong in this area, black is not able to capture this somehow of course. There's no ladder, there's no net. So the most black can do is just Atari once. And then protect this cutting point. So black leaves, black doesn't play this Atari because in the future black might want to play Atari from that direction here to be able to squeeze white into an ugly shape. And we're gonna see that quite soon, how black is threatening that. But this move from white is, you know, making territory on the left while also trying to take away the shape from black. Uh, we see that black is starting to make an eye here, but white is still threatening to play here to make it in a full side potentially. So it looks like black is close to getting one eye, but you know this group is still in danger of dying. I would still die if I played <laughs> this position as black. Um, and at this point we see that white plays this really slow looking move, which is precisely because otherwise black is going to get, if white, let's see, um, if white maybe plays some random move, to allow black to play here next would be quite annoying. If white captures, you get this ugly shape, and if white white comes out, then you get like extra forcing moves, and you need, suddenly black has more eye shape than before. Um, so I think this is the reason for white just playing here. And black even plays this one to threaten to uh, threaten to play this hand the next, and um, get another Atari. So once again, white extends, keeping the liberties, uh, keeping many liberties with this group. Black pushes, threatening to move into the to the left, but white just attacks the shape again. Um, so I th I find it really interesting how both like Katago throughout this fight, Katago is still saying confidently that oh it's it's an even game. So I think they are both kind of <laughs> both Katago, so to say, even though it's only one Katago playing itself. 
Uh, Kotoko doesn't expect this group to die, but it's all through this, this it's expecting it to just um, this is going to end in some sort of compromise where black leaves, but white gets enough gets enough compensation to keep the game even. And this is something we see like all the time happening in pro games too. That you know a fight quite often they get into all or nothing fights. Watching the game, I think that okay now this this game is going to be decided where the black lives or dies. Uh, surely if black dies, the game is over, and if black lives, then the game should be over for <laughs> the opposite reasons. So, but then in the end it turns out that you know they found some way to make a compromise because both players are really good at sort of finding the way out. And what I find really interesting here is that we can sort of see in it, advanced to Kotoko already at this point is really uh, quite sure that that's how it's going to turn out, even though it looks to, to my eyes that the group is close to dying. Uh, but Kotoko, even though this wall on the right here was really strong, they're still forcing moves like this peep. And at this point, Kotoko just decides that, ah, okay, I, I'm not interested in trying to keep attacking this, I'm going to pull out this stone on the on the bottom. I don't completely understand this, but I, I think the reasoning sort of is that like before if, if white just so let's say white just connect here, there's some possibility of black moving down here and in the future connecting to these two stones. And so I think the point of this move is, is that if black just responds for instance like this, um maybe we have something like this and now it's much harder for black to actually connect. Um, you know, it's hard to find a shape to move out with these stones locally. Something like this will just get cut off. And, you know, a bad shape like this, white can just like this. So I think white is trying to get some, some forcing exchanges here for connecting, but black decides, no, that's not, I can't afford to respond to that right now. So I'm just going to make sure that the group in the center is, is actually completely alive. Black plays one forcing move. And then place again at center and white gets the chance to, to save these two stones. So we see that part of the compensation white got here was that before this was a little bit of black territory but now white saved these stones and it's going to probably make territory in, in this area suddenly. Also this opens up a whole lot of problems actually, or not a whole lot of problems, but there is now a little bit of argy with uh, these four stones again, uh, which weren't here before when this stone, this white stone was dead, so we'll see that quite soon. Uh, so at this point, after black got this push here, now black definitely has enough like resources to, to live. So black play, has time to play like a big territorial move, sort of a bit separate from the fight, but still affecting it indirectly. Uh, before once again returning to so like this move is probably threatening somehow in some variations to connect up and when white protects that black returns to helping the center group. And here we see another part of where which sort of white compensate what sort of compensation white gets for this weak black group, even though it will be able to live in the end, while living, white is able to destroy what was looking like black's territory before on the right here. Yeah, so even though black has a super strong shape in the corner, had a super strong shape down here, when white Black has a weak group in the center, suddenly white is allowed to just push right in because black is forced to play safely for this group in this area. Black can't afford to focus on taking territory. In that case, white would cut black off and kill black in the center. Now, black is connected up with this group, basically, in the center. So black turns to playing a very big uh, endgame. Uh, this is so big because white can't actually play a Hani here locally. Um, then black can cut, and if white Atari is like this, black can just Atari, and this is bad for white. So locally, white would need to back off, but then like this is giving up a lot in the corner. Um, I think this was like also quite possible move, but in the game, white instead decided to play this, which is another big point. Like if white plays here. Uh, black can jump in here in the future, probably, in some way. Maybe not like this, I'm not sure what's happening with this wedge and so on. But white thought it was worth it to spend a move to make this territory. But that, that means black has to follow up in the lower right. Connects here, connects here.
is one harder. <coughs> and now we see. So one part of the compensation that White got was this area, so now Black is trying to take that away. And White, of course, wants to keep this point if possible. So White plays this, threatening to move in here, taking away the eye shape of this group, which is still like a threat. There's still a possibility of cutting here. Black is one move away from, from connecting. And if White gets to move, move in here, that's going to threaten both this cut and this cut. So as Black, I would be very tempted to just uh, block here. But then, of course, White can block off this area. So black tries to counterattack like this, force white to connect this one stone, and then continue moving in, trying to connect up with this stone stone here. Also notice that thanks to black playing this move in the corner, actually this white group uh, might be, life and death of this group might be threatened in the future. But now white gets to push in here, which was the threat of this move. Uh, here's kind of a, Maybe a quick easy quiz. Where would you play as black to make sure that all the stones remain connected? If black plays from this side, then white can push like this, and this group is cut off. If black plays here, then white can push and push, and now there are two cutting points. So black played here, which nicely fixes both cutting points at the same time. White pushes like this, black is all connected, black is all connected. So not a very hard move to find, but I sort of <laughs> thought it was quite uh, pretty. So now white turns to making a life with this group on the bottom. And of course, at the moment, white has Miai of like, capturing these stones and making a life. But uh, we see here that black gets to spend a move kind of solidifying this connection while also threatening to cut off some points in the center. So white tries to stay connected. Black forces white to connect. And we saw that white manages to live, no problem in the end, but black got to reduce this group a little bit. Now we have some big endgame points here. Just a meaningless wasting of a code threat. And this move, I'm not quite sure of the significance of saving these stones. And we're going to see some. Um, Nice endgame by both sides soon in the, in the bottom left. By white using this RG and by black using the fact that this group is not quite quite alive. So actually, making sure that these stones are all safe is is quite um, quite big. But we're gonna see another reason why white drilling in through here was so big. White actually has a big endgame towards this corner. So you might think that with this, like if black didn't wouldn't have the two two here, definitely there would be some problems with the corner. But it looks like black has quite a strong shape. Um, you know, black has enough eye shape to make a life definitely in this corner, you would think. But it's really scary actually when white comes in here. And it turns out this doesn't kill or anything, but it's a very nice reduction in center for white. So black blocks it off from connecting, white cuts, and black can't play an Atari from this side because white will just Atari out. So black capture distance like this. But black is forced to just eat, eat these stones, and white got all these moves on the outside in, in Santa. Next up, white threatens to take these two stones, but black now plays an Atari here, and now we see that white needs to be careful about this group. Uh, so, first, we see some other moves, but then when white black plays this Hane, now white just needs to live with this group, and it's going to end up with just two points. So, white here. Black takes away this eye, and then white is forced to leave, and black gets this Hana for free, which is quite big, because otherwise white can Hana connect in the corner in Santa. So that was the composition black got for white ignoring this group for a few moves. Just have some normal end game. And here's the next interesting part. So white plays, you can see that after white got this move, that might make a difference to the liberties in this situation. So when white plays here, it looks like, okay, did black mess up by allowing white to get this move and move next here? Uh, it looks like, you know, if <laughs> is black about to die here, and if black's not about to die, shouldn't white play from the outside instead? Was this a big mistake for white? Um, even, you know, a Seki would be a good result for, um, for white locally. 
So, if you want to try to read out what happens beforehand, you can maybe pause the video here and try to read it out. But black connects, white plays an Atari, and at this point, if black captures here, white would win the capturing race. Here, it's sort of um, like if black tries to take, take away this eye, black runs out of liberties first. Um, so at this point, black is forced to come from this side, take away the eye shape of white, while also making his eye shape of himself. So white gets to capture one stone. Black threatens to make it a full eye. White removes black eye shape. And the end result, at this point, black does make it first. White can't play like this. White is going to die. So the best white gets is that white gets to force from the outside. White got all these moves for free and made black play move inside his own territory to, or their own side territory to capture this group. So if you compare to the beginning, imagine that um, white gets to capture here. White gets to capture here, but also play here and here for free, and black is forced to play moves inside, reducing the territory while that's happening. Also, white still has this Atari in the future. Now white cuts off this one stone. Um, after black saves these two stones, this is a very big endgame point, since this peep would be center for, for black, so white takes it first. Black plays this Hana connects. White forces for some reason one with, with this Atari and then connects. I'm just gonna scroll through the rest of the end game. Not too much exciting happening. A few reductions on the top. I should say that at this point uh, the win rate has gone to about 70% for white. Katago is expecting white to win by one point at, at, at this point, but uh, there's still some uncertainty. Uh, and there are many moves here which are um, probably, you know, there are multiple moves which lead to the same result. Let's see here, black, white needs to move inside, otherwise black Ataris and cuts. And so we get to this result where we, has, we can see that the win rate has actually gone back to 50-50. And that's because there's the game will come down to this co here in the end. And uh, it will come down to whether black can keep winning this co while also feeling the dame. Remember that this, this is, uh, well technically, well, some sort of area scoring rules. I'm not sure exactly what Kataka is configured with, actually. Um, but so the dam are worth points, so black needs to both win this co and also uh, keep filling dame. Like, dame, filling dame is our valid co threats for white in hand. Uh, we're not quite there yet, we still have some uh, regular moves. You can see at some point soon here, white, white connects here, but if black just... So this is sort of partial success for black in playing this co, is that if white manages to connect, white will make an eye here, but now black has ensured that white will force the connect here, so normally we'll just call it a day with this co and say that you got what you wanted. But just connecting here is still not good enough for black. Black needs to keep filling dame points. Um, this move like indirectly fills the dame by threatening to take um, another dame here. Uh, so black, white takes the co, black plays a co-threat, but now white can just fill a dame as a co-threat. Uh, so black can't, still can't afford to play the co, black would lose by one point. Um, but in the end... Wait, what did I say? I, I, <laughs> I said, at, at, so at this point, instead of filling the co, yeah, did I say that? Instead of filling the co, if black fills the co, black loses by one point, so black needs to take a dame, allow white to take the co, and then play a co-threat. Um, again, white plays a dame as a co-threat, black plays a dame, white, black has a real co-threat. So the point is that during this co, black has to find real co-threat, while white can just continue filling dame. Uh, in the end though, 
black actually has less code threads at this point. Um, black would have to continue. Black has like one more code thread here. Um, and one more code thread here, but white actually has uh, one down here and actually two up in this corner. Uh, white can first throw in here and then we get another one no matter how black responds. So at this point, instead of just playing a code threat, uh, black just takes a dame, white wills the co, black takes the last dame. And indeed, this is not enough to win for black, black loses by one point. So I just, I really liked that game. I liked how white made a really big uh, moyo and then black jumped in and managed to live, but we saw that uh, white actually made enough compensation by, um, you know, in the end, white didn't make many points in this area, but white managed to reduce black's corner in the upper right to like no points, took away black's points on the right, and just add you on the, here on the bottom. So yeah, in the game, white won by one point. Interestingly, you know, in the, <laughs> at the absolute beginning of the game, uh, Katago was saying that the game is slightly better for white. Like after this, uh, like at this point, it's just like half a point better for white. So <laughs> almost all throughout the game, it's, it thought that white was slightly better, but there were some ups, ups and downs in the middle. Uh, so I don't think you can say that Katago <laughs> expected a result from the beginning, of course. That's way beyond its capabilities. Um, but yeah, I also liked how it stayed like fairly even. Uh, all throughout the game, even with all this fighting. So, I hope you also liked that game, and uh, thank you for watching.